One year out from the Silver Squeeze movement, what have we learned? What has happened? Did it work? Here is a little commentary on the good, the bad and the ugly of the last year of Silver Squeezing. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and a warm welcome to all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now, we're a year out from the rise of the Silver Squeeze movement and this notion that we as collectors could corner the market and somehow squeeze silver to all new highs. And I want to do a retrospective look back at this year of silver squeezing and take a good look at the good, the bad, and the ugly, because there are all three elements in this story of the Silver Squeeze, and I think it is important to talk about all of them. Herald the good, but also highlight some of the not so good as well. It's a really interesting period to be a silver stacker, and I really have kind of enjoyed, but also not enjoyed the rise of the Silver Squeeze movement. So it is an interesting one to definitely talk about. But I do want to reinforce my usual message that I am just doing an opinion piece. This is just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject. And it really should not take what I say as financial advice. And that's one of the kind of key messages that I had a major umbrance with, with the Silver Squeeze movement, that there were all of a sudden all of these experts out there. Now, I've done a whole load of different silver videos across my time here on YouTube, as you may look at, back at a thousand plus videos. And I don't, I don't think I'm any kind of expert or savant or know really what I'm doing beyond buying shiny things and hoping for the best over the long run. And when I saw and, and kept on seeing lots of different people touting that silver was going to be this humongously incredible performing asset that people would be able to triple their money on in that early days, you know, it, it didn't sit well with me and quite a lot of other people as well. And it kind of evolved from there to, I think, be slightly better. So it started out with these incredible intentions of being able to squeeze silver to the moon and making silver go up and up and up. And for a short time, it looked like it was going quite well. We saw prices go up and up and you know, dealer premiums went up as well. But the spot price went to quite high levels. Now, how much you can attribute to an active buying market of bullion enthusiasts who are fueled by social media is kind of anybody's guess, but I do think that there was a part to play for the silver silver squeezers and silver squeeze movement. But did it have a long lasting effect? I think you can only look at the last year for silver and see the steady decline down. And so we come to now some of the ugly parts of the silver squeeze movement, which really have got a lot of people stuck in silver now for quite a while, which isn't inherently a bad thing. I quite like silver, as you can see. I've got a lot of silver. I enjoy it. I think it is a wonderful asset to own and a good diversification tool. However, you do need to have this kind of long-term outlook on it, and one of the things that silver squeezing was all about was the shorter term, you know, end the Fed, we can collapse, we can break the COMEX next month because they've got to take delivery of X, Y, and Z, or, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. So now there are a lot of people who are stuck holding quite expensive silver, and that's fine if you are in that position, but if you are now forced to sell, or as with very many people at the moment, uh, you know, there are a lot of impatient people, to say the least, in this world that want to have a quick turnaround, that want to have their investments tripled within an hour or a day. You've only got to look at the kind of GameStop, which is where all of this um, kind of was born from, really. Wall Street bets turns into Wall Street silver and the silver squeeze movement. And it was all about this quick return, this ability to squeeze a market and really kind of, uh, you know, play the banker's game. And I always found kind of a little bit of umbrance with that because... You know, you, a lot of people who stack silver do so because they feel like the powers that be, government and whatever, uh, you know, they, they are the ones that are kind of manipulating the markets and the bankers are manipulating the markets. And then you want to go and show them who's boss by manipulating the markets. It didn't make any sense to me at all, which I thought was quite an interesting concept. But there are a lot of good things, and I want to talk about those now. So the good things that have come out from the Silver Squeeze movement are this huge new wave of silver and gold stacking investors who have really come, I think, around to this idea that having something other than just cash in your bank account is a good idea, is something that is worth having. And all of this new awareness that has arisen because of the Silver Squeeze movement, I think, is fantastic. And I welcome each and every new stacker to the table. I mean, goodness me, I love it when you guys come and watch my videos. I have a little bit more of a 
I guess, negative pers- perspective on things. I'm more of a cup half empty kind of guy when it comes to silver and gold compared with other things. I do think the silver and gold still have a place in any portfolio, but they're not an asset that you should go all in on. They're not something that you should put every single egg you own in that same basket uh, where a lot of people do think that and that's their opinion but I'm going to stick with mine and I often will bash silver and gold and tell you that it's imperfect and that's kind of what I like to do but I do think there's a lot of people out there who were like-minded to myself that really didn't like the idea of a lot of these people just simply buying silver because they think that next month they're going to crash the COMEX and it's going to make them millionaires. That's not what silver and gold are about. But there are now a lot of people who are on board in the long-term silver and gold train. Some by kind of necessity because they are stuck with high-priced investments that they really do have to keep, otherwise they materialise a really quite nasty loss. But, you know, that's part of the risk that anybody plays when buying silver. I know that I've been through... I mean, I've built, bought some silver and gold at those highs as well, just because that was part of my ongoing budget and they're sitting at the rather expensive end of my stack. But maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, it'll be all good. And that's kind of where I like to see it. Now, I want to finish this second half of the video with kind of the ugly side of social media, which is the thing that I think I don't like at all about this whole rise of Silver Squeeze movement. Um, there was very early on this huge rhetoric of you're either with us or against us. And um, because of the style of my videos and style of my channel and the questioning nature of the kind of commentary that I do, I was very much lumped into that I'm against it movement. And ultimately, I'm not against anybody buying silver. I love silver. As you can see, I have a lot of silver. But, you know, there are some definite foibles to be had with this social media bandwagon. And I do think it's dangerous these days. I think that there is a lot to be said for um, steering clear of certain social media platforms, which are more renowned to be toxic than others. And really just kind of yeah, some people don't enjoy it. Some people enjoy it a lot when it's kind of just the funny side of things, posting the memes, and that's fine. Fine, do that. I think it's childish. I think that there's a lot of, um, you know, self-degradation there, calling oneself apes, which doesn't do anybody any favours. And you saw that, I think, with a lot of people um, being kind of ridiculed by major news outlets when it started to rise up and people were starting to take notice uh, there were articles and you know things going on that saying you know these these people who are I mean they, they generalized but they were they were saying that people living in mum's basement calling themselves apes buying shiny things you know it, it did didn't sit well with a lot of people and I think it just makes a lot of other people look worse than they actually are and uh, it's a small generalization, but it, it doesn't help anybody at all. And that social media kind of engine that grows and grows and grows brings with it its own secondary problems. And that is partly down to things like YouTube here. So there's no secret that YouTube pays uh, for adverts on content creators. And it's part of my livelihood. It's part of my income. And a lot of people have realized that if they start to make videos about silver and they get a good one, they could be monetized and they could make money uh, branding you know, t-shirts and all of this, it's its about cash. And I think that this world that we live in, this modern world of social media and, um, you know, sort of fast-paced, you know, ideas about wondrous things happening in the future fuels this kind of branding. And, you know, that's great to kind of have. But at the end of the day, I think part of the reason this has been quite success- so successful from uh, the early onset is because somebody recognized they could cash in on a brand. They could cash in on brand deals, ad revenue. Um, you know, it, you've got to see sort of what's it called, the, the the bigger picture here, because there are ulterior motives, I think is what I'm trying to say for a lot of these people. Um, you know, for example, and I and this is the thing I take biggest umbrance with, you know, when you saw the Silver Squeeze movement come out, there were a lot of people who were all of a sudden sponsored by some of the big bullion dealers. And they were saying that there's this shortage of silver and you need to go out and you rush and buy it now because it won't be there any longer. There will be no more silver. It will be a thing that you cannot get unobtainium. By the way, here's my affiliate bonus code down in the description. Go and buy as much as you can from this company. Um, and, you know, the only people that were winning by, and of course it was at huge premiums as well, so the only people that were winning in that scenario were the, uh, the, the sponsors and, of course, the actual content creators too. Now, I don't have a fundamental problem with, you know, sponsorships and, um, you know, affiliate bonus codes, but what I do have a problem with is people basically just going, yep, yeah, go, go buy it now, go buy it now quickly before it's out, I'm doing it now and it's important that you do it too. 
it's the rise of the kind of back seat or the the armchair financial advisor which i do take umbrance with and i always very much try to give a kind of you know it's just my opinion but a lot of people basically tout things off as if they know everything and then they just put this little kind of that it's really strange so like with my stuff i'll put my little you know notification my disclaimer i'm not a financial advisor i'm just a guy who likes to buy shiny things and i do try and steer clear of using the word advice and a lot of these other creators and you know brand producers and so on they don't they just go off and they tout it off as if they know everything and they're a qualified financial advisor which is really dangerous and i think a lot of people could and probably have fallen foul of it um i think there was you know there's a lot of fallout from the gamestop movement about this whole notion of giving stock advice and things like that and i I was interested in to see how it would sort of transpose through to the silver stacking community and the Wall Street silver and silver squeeze movements. It hasn't really followed through. But now we are a year out and the, the notion of the silver squeeze, I think, is um, is pretty much dead and buried, really, for serious stackers. The idea that we can squeeze this stuff into oblivion, I think, is unobtainable. And uh, I think a lot of people have kind of realized that and are sitting back now and holding their investments for a long term. And you see the silver squeeze movement on uh, Wall Street Silver really turn more now to a kind of show off stacking community rather than a end the Fed. But there is still this rhetoric of people who think that any day now it's going to collapse. And uh, I don't like that side of things, but I do appreciate that people are frustrated with the world that they're in right now. And there are bigger factors at play than just buying shiny stuff. It's uh, an interesting time. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, the year out from Silver Squeeze. It hasn't worked. Surprise, surprise. I've done numerous videos at the time and throughout the last year to say that it won't work. And lo and behold, I was right. And so was Mrs. Backyard Bullion, by the way. If uh, you didn't know, I turned to her when this was all kicking off right this time last year and said, do you know people are trying to squeeze silver and trying to get it to $100 an ounce, $1,000 an ounce? And her right smile and raised eyebrow kind of said it all. If I could have just put out a video with her doing that, I think it would have said the world of what I think as well. So, yeah, we are where we are. I hope you guys have enjoyed the last year of the Silver Squeeze for whatever it has brought to you, whether it be the, uh, the, the actual squeezing and the actual enjoyment of the movement or... The content that people like myself have been creating along the way. I do hope that you've had a good year from this craziness that we've been experiencing. Otherwise, that is it from me. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on this last year of Silver Squeezing. What are your thoughts? It would be great to hear down in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button and share it around through your social media. Certainly if you like the Kilo Queen's Beast glinting in the sun, that's worthy of a like in its own right beautiful. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. A big thank you to you all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more. 